I want some response. You ready?
Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you go. Wait for a
girls. Beautiful. Yay. If anybody else has a talent that you would like to share, make sure that you let me know because I do have spaces open for talent, okay? Yeah. Uh, also forgot to tell the newbies about the bracelets. Everybody look up here. The newbies especially see this lovely plastic bracelet. You too can have one. If you come to seven meetings and do seven challenges, you can have one for free, okay? That's how we're going to do the bracelets from now on. And the bracelets, the reason why we have them is why? Who knows? Did you guys forget already? Reminder. What are they for? Reminder. Reminder. To rise above. That's right. Reminder to do things a little bit better. Act a little bit better and be a little bit better. That's your own reminder. Okay? It also brings us together as a group. When people see this, they expect you to rise a little bit rise above and act a little better, okay? So remember that each morning when you put it on. All right, so last week we had 57, six newbies, and 21 people did the challenge. So we were supposed to have two um, personal story shares tonight, but um, it looks like Haley didn't come tonight, so we will put her on another night. And I would ask that you give Amanda Dorsey your attention. Whoa, whoa, we just had a moment, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. I just want to say I'm not a public speaker, so. Uh, I get very nervous. Very well. Hi, Amanda. Hi, okay, so for those who don't know me, I'm Amanda. Um, I'm 20 years old, and I have two brothers and, I mean, one brother and two sisters. Um, my childhood was kind of rocky. Um, my parents divorced when I was two, and I just remember bits and pieces of being thrown in back and forth, so I ended up living with my grandmas for two years. Um, when my mom remarried to my now younger sister, um, her dad, I was about three or four years old. Um, he used to beat me um, for just spraying on things. I don't think he really liked kids that much. Um, but he beat me so bad one time that, um, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but um, I used to go to the bathroom when I was little, I'd take all my clothes off. And my grandma saw handprints on the back of my, my um, self. Um, so my mom ended up divorcing from him from, for that, but that's as far as it went. Um, my boy, my mom had a lot of boyfriends over the years, and they all lived with us, so we moved around a lot. I went to 16 different schools, and that includes both my high school, elementary, and middle school. Um, let's see. I went to Lakewood 4th through 8th, that's when I moved in with my dad and my stepmom, who have been really like the only people there for me and my family besides my grandparents. Um, I was also a cheerleader in 5th through 8th grade, um, and I got picked on a lot, of name, a lot for my last name. People used to call me Horsey. <coughs> I don't know why, I don't really quite get it, but never looks like it, I guess. Um, after 8th grade, I moved back in with my mom, and I went to Western South for my 9th and 10th grade year. That's when it got really bad. Um, I had a lot of friends that were drug dealers and drugs, so I was a lot, around a lot of that. Um, and one of my boyfriends was even a drug dealer, so I got really hard into drugs and um, alcohol. So I was always drinking and smoking and everything you probably think of. We would skip school to go and do it. Um, my mom would think we're at school, but we'd have one of our friends' moms call us all in and say we're sick or whatever else. Um, my freshman year, I lost my great grandmother, which she raised me a lot um, to Alzheimer's. And uh, she used to watch me and my sister after school, and she had her own band. So we used to sing and stuff a lot. So a lot of times I will get very upset if I hear a song that we used to sing together. Okay, um, my freshman year I had a boyfriend. His name was Robert. He to be my best friend's brother. Um, I dated him for most of my freshman year and then half of my sophomore year, so sophomore summer. And, um, he was very mentally and emotionally abusive. He would tell me that I wasn't worth anything. I wasn't allowed to talk to any of my friends. If I 
got caught talking in class to one person, you get completely pissed off from that. Wouldn't barely talk to me, but he wouldn't let me go around people. Um, his best, best friend raped me in my freshman year at a bonfire. He slipped roofies in my drink. So if I go anywhere, I'm very uncomfortable in my, my drink places, or even uh, I have my hand on it at all times. Um, and he, when I told him about it, he told me that I deserved it because I was a slut, a bitch, etc. Um, my junior year, I lost both my childhood pets, and um, one of them even died on a, a camping trip I went on to. And uh, I started dating another kid um, who was another mentally abusive person. So that kind of, I went into a very deep depression, and I started cutting. And um, people would say, you know, you need to cut deeper, or, you know, like, I get all kinds of names from that. Um, my senior year, I started dating a guy named Alan. Everything was perfect, he was wonderful, until we got engaged and moved in together. He <coughs> quit his job, so, and moved in with his friends, so I was going into work at 3 in the afternoon and not getting home until 8 o'clock in the morning. I was paying all the bills, I would go to the grocery store and buy $300 worth of groceries would be gone by I got home from work the next day. Um, let's see. I rented a house after that because I couldn't stand in our apartment any longer because it was a $900 apartment and I wasn't bringing that much money to do bills and pay for the, the apartment. So I got a house and we moved in. His friend got fed up with him and moved out. So I moved in his two brothers that didn't have jobs. Who one was my age and the other one was 25 and they refused to get jobs or help clean or anything. Um, <coughs> I had to quit school because I couldn't find time to sleep and I was getting very irritated with everybody. Um, right after we moved into our, my house that I had, um, he became very abusive, pushed me downstairs, cut me with knives. Um, he was mentally abusive. I was very isolated from my family. Um, we just recently started talking again I moved back in with my parents after I decided to leave them after two years. Um, let's see. After I left Allen, I became a very heavy alcoholic. Um, you can ask my family, I was never sober at all. Um, my 19th birthday party lasted three months long, and I don't remember a thing. Um, I go to work drunk, I come home drunk again. Um, it was a very, very bad experience for me. The only thing that I can tell you what happened is what I see from videos that people took on the phones. That's about it, not in pictures. So it was, it was a very bad time for me. And I also, my best friend that I lived with, we moved to Somerset. And I got addicted to snorting pills. So on top of drinking, I was snorting pills anywhere from 10 or more a day. And it got to be very expensive, and I was spending my whole paycheck on buying pills and alcohol. So I was very, very, very skinny. <laughs> and then um, in March of 2010, I lost my best friend. His name is Billy Laughlin. And I blame myself every day for it. Not, not going to hang out with him because I was supposed to hang out with him the night he died. But instead, I went to a party because I had a bad night at work. And I still feel that if I would have gone, he'd still be here. Um, my mom and my family, they blame me a lot for different things in their family. They also tell me all the time that I'm fat. They've been telling me I'm fat since I was four. So um, when I finally got over cutting, I started eating. And now I've turned into this, I feel like I'm the fattest person in the world. And, um, My mom constantly picks on me for that and anything else she can find. And um, she puts her boyfriend in front of me. Her last boyfriend was my age. And um, it was kind of kind of hard for me because I didn't know how to act around him. And so I just kind of stayed away from him altogether. And recently she's just kind of turned into this person that always wants to fight no matter what. So I just kind of cut her out of my life. Um, My friends are the ones that I help me mostly. Between them and my dad, I don't think I could have got through um, anything. I stopped cutting when um, 
my dad came in my room one night and he was very upset. And me and my mom had gotten a fight. And I told him to just leave me alone because I wanted to die. And that's the only time I've ever seen my dad die, like cry as hard as he did. And um, he wouldn't leave me alone for days. You know, when he finally got the nerve to talk to me, I, I cried and I couldn't, I couldn't stop. Um, most days are good for me. Sometimes I still fall into a depression, but um, I have learned that over the days it does get a lot better. Um, I do have a lot of friends that say they're my friend and then they just turn back whenever I need them. I'm one of the people that, you know, I'm always the person that goes, I'm my wife for people. If you need money, I'm mostly the person that gives it to you. I've had friends that, are, that owe me 2,000 plus dollars and they just don't come around whenever I say anything about it. Um, I always put people's problems above mine, even when I'm not feeling the best of the days. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, most of you I, I know, and I can see a part of me in, in you guys. And I don't want you guys to let that fire die in you. Because mine has, and I'm trying to get it back. Because I feel like I lost my childhood I'm trying to grow up too fast. And I still have a part of my child in me, and I'm trying to get that back. So don't, don't think that your life is over just because something bad is happening, happening in, your, in your day or, you know, something's going on right now. It does get better, and you'll get that over time. But don't ever grow up for anybody. Don't ever change for anybody. Be yourself. Thank you, Amanda. And that um, actually is a perfect lead in to my lesson tonight. Perfect. I couldn't have planned it any better myself. Um, I would like each of the people that I asked to help me tonight to come up.
Flip them, guys. <laughs> Those are not words about Amanda. Amanda is beautiful. She is my helper. She is kind. And she is loving. I can go to Amanda any time of the day, and I know whatever I need, she's going to do it for me without any questions asked. That's the kind of person I see in her. I ask these guys to put on the other side of their cards what they thought of their selves. Okay? Now I'm going to teach you another little lesson. Thanks, guys. Let me tell you something that's a little bit different. Okay? I told you I. this is my A here. I had a paper and I was going to stick it to me and wear it, but things just kind of didn't work out that way. We, we get labels put on us all the time by different people throughout our lives, okay? Um, some of you guys know when I was younger, because I've shared my story before, <coughs> the labels that I had were dirty kid, ugly, Bossy. Sorry about the writing, but you guys get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that uh, people said about me when I was younger. Okay? <laughs> they don't say those things about me now. They said them about me when I was younger. Okay? Let me tell you the difference. I chose not to believe those things. I chose not to wear those labels. Instead, my other side of the card said, smart. I am smart. I am God's child. I am a good singer. I am funny. Okay? I chose to make my own labels for myself. Now, it would have been just as easy, probably easier, for me to keep the labels that everyone else put on me. Okay? Because some days it was hard when people continually say bad things to you. You start to believe those things unless you have a better idea. Yes, please do. You can't have it yet. <laughs> unless you have a better idea. Now, let me tell you how I was able to do this. Two things. Number one, I thought it was smart because I had one person that believed in me, the librarian at my school thought I was smart. Okay? That's where I got that. <laughs> and then I had my dad who told me I was God's child. So he taught me that God had a better idea for me than I had for myself. So the more I believed that, the more it came to be. And I didn't have to be drugged down with depression. Now we talked about teen suicide last week and depression. How many of you guys were here last week? Okay, almost all of you. So this is kind of going along those same lines. This week's lesson is on self-confidence. Okay? And I'm going to explain a, little, a few things about it. I want to tell you a little story. We talked about some of the things um, about me and some of these other girls and guys that were up here to help me out. I want to tell you about somebody else that I know. Um, a little boy named David. How many of you guys know David Gentle who's come here a few times? He's like this big, he's got red hair. Sweetest kid in the world, okay? Actually, this boy looked kind of like him. <coughs> His name was David, he looked like him. Very small, redhead, freckle-faced boy. Not really good for much. Nobody thought very much of him. He was a shepherd. Back in the day when they had people to tend the sheep, okay? And that's what he did. He just sat around and watched the sheep all the time. And his brothers were big and strong, and they went out to war, and they were warriors and everything, and he sat home and took care of the sheep. Now, David 
saw himself as he was growing up. Not as a shepherd, but as a warrior. He looked into the future and saw himself doing something better with his life than what he was doing. Okay? And one day, a man came along, a man of God came along, and asked to see, uh, he went to David's dad, and he asked to see all of his sons. He was going to be choosing the next king. And the man brought out all of his sons, and I don't know how many sons he had. He brought everybody but David, because David was out with the sheep. Okay? Lined up all of his sons and said, here you go, pick the best one. And he was sure, oh, you know, the big one over here with all the muscles and the tall, dark hair and everything, he was going to get picked. He's perfect king material. And the man of God came by and said, are you sure you don't have any more sons? Because I, I don't see anyone here that fits the bill for what I'm looking for. That You've got to have another son. And the man said, well, yeah, i got one more. He's out in the field with the sheep. You don't want to see him. He's not really worth anything. He's just a small little thing. He said, no, bring him to me. Bring him to me. I want to see him. So they brought David in from the sheep. And the man of God said, that's him. That's the king. And everybody was like, yeah, right. He's going to be a king. I don't think so. But let me tell you, David saw himself as a warrior. God saw him as a king. Now, you guys know this is not a Bible class, okay? I just wanted to use that little story because I thought it was so good. So many times, if we take the time to, number one, not listen to what other people think about us, but number two, <coughs> think better for ourselves, and number three, think that God has even a better plan for us. There's no, te no telling how far we can go with that. Okay? The reason that I did not choose to stay in poverty, I did not choose to be the dirty kid my whole life. I thought, one of these days I'm going to be smart. I'm going to learn all I can learn at school. I'm going to grow up and get out of here and do something with myself because I don't want that. And I thought, for so many years, I thought, I love to sing, and I'm going to be a praise and worship leader. I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to lead the band, and even though we don't have a band, but, you know, I'm going to make one, and I thought all this cool stuff. I, for the last five years, you guys, for the last five years, I was convinced I'm going to be a praise and worship leader, okay? I learned all the songs. I printed them all out, put them in a book and everything. I called all kind of people. I was going to be the praise and worship leader. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you couldn't tell me otherwise. Guess what? God had a different thing for me. God didn't see me as a praise and worship leader. He saw me as a youth leader for you. And that's better than anything I could have ever thought of. So not only did I decide I was not going to listen to all the haters, I decided I wanted something better. But yet, when God said, I got something even better for you, I was able to say, okay, that's cool, I'll take that. I don't need mine, okay? So there comes a time when you have to let go because David could have been like, you know what, I, I'm just happy being a warrior. You know, I'm just going to go out and kill as many people as I can. I'm going to be the best one that they all come and cheer for. And he could have stayed a warrior. But he chose to accept the position of king when it was given to him, okay? Because that's what God wanted for him. Now, let me erase this. I'm going to read you guys something. And I bet you can tell me who wrote it when I get done. It's just called Thoughts. It's like I'm trying to be something I'm not. The best trying to go out of my way to impress people who don't take a second look at me. Letting them control my emotions. One wrong move and I mess up for good. I try to be the smartest. I can be the most mature, the skinniest, the tannest, the prettiest. It's a constant competition. And for what? Another heartbreak. When I get close to someone, they take advantage of me and leave me. I give and give and keep wanting to get something good in return. But all I get is more hurt and the feeling of being used. My mind is mess a messed up place. And my ultimate goal is just to be happy. But that seems impossible right now. I've done everything I can to please everyone all the time to get them to accept me. Now I just sit back in the shadows and see if anyone will notice I'm there. I still try to be the pretty perfect one, 
but I've given up. I don't talk to people unless they approach me first. I keep to myself, and the only way I keep myself going is because I see my future and my faith and hope for a better tomorrow. My dreams are too big for this town. It's doing nothing but bringing me down. Who do you think was that? Or wrote that? Her folder in her room, you guys, is filled with stuff like that. Filled. I mean, I can't even tell you how many things she wrote like that. Um, and it hurts me to read that stuff, but I read it and I bring it to you because I know it's going to help you. And she didn't know how much she meant to us when she was here. She saw herself down here. Sometimes she saw herself a little bit more up here, but God had bigger plans for her. She gave her life up so that you guys could come in here and learn how to properly treat each other, to learn that you're worth more than what you think you are, so that you can come in here every single week and become a better person. If she hadn't have died, none of you guys would be here because this group wouldn't exist. So that you see what I mean about we have a plan for our lives, but God has a better one. And his plans are way much more better than our plans. So whenever you stop and think, you know what, my life just stinks so bad, I can't stand it, you know, everything's going wrong, and you're so down on yourself and you're listening to all the horrible things that people say about you, stop and take a minute and realize that you don't have to think on those things. You can choose to see yourself higher. You can choose to see yourself better. And you can choose to believe that God has a plan for you. And guess what? I know I talk about God a lot in here, and I got news for you that don't believe in God. Everybody in this room that doesn't believe in God, he believes in you. He believes in you whether you believe in him or not. And he's got a plan. Lauren sometimes questioned whether or not she believed in God because she said, I, I talk to him all the time, he never seems to listen. He had a plan for her life, he just didn't clue her in on it. Okay? So we need to learn from that experience. We need to understand that no matter where you're at in your life, you're not destined to stay there. Things are destined to get better for you. Number one, if you keep the positive in the forefront of your mind and decide that you're going to be somebody better. And number two, if you decide that you're going to let God take care of where he wants to take you. You can become so much better of a person. You can help so many more people. Who knows? what some of these people that were standing up here, they had on the other side of their car. Let me get one. Ghetto. <laughs> of course, that would be the one I pulled out. Okay. Some people say Allie's fat. Allie says she's ghetto. What does God think of Allie? He knows who I am. He knows who you are. <laughs> That's right. And he's got better plans. Allie may be the next praise and worship leader. Allie may be the next American Idol. American Idol. <laughs> okay? There are lots bigger things than what you guys think for yourselves. Okay? You've got to get out of the box. I keep telling you guys that all the time. Get out of your little box that you have yourself in. Okay? It ain't no fun in a box. <laughs> now, let me tell you something else. Okay? I keep talking about... Um, it's how important it is that we see ourselves the way that God sees us. Let me tell you why. Okay? Because life is like a big parade. Here we all are, marching in the parade. Here's everything that happens in our lives. Isn't that this beautiful parade? It's, it's lovely, isn't it? This is the parade. Okay? Now, here we are standing at the parade. This is watching the parade, and this is Allie watching the parade. <laughs> Chase. She doesn't make the beautiful faces. Katie. We're all standing here watching the parade. Okay, aren't we cute? Okay, now, we're watching the parade. This is the street. What can we see? We can see the part of the parade that's right in front of us, and we can remember the part of the parade that's already gone on. We can't see what's coming around the bend. Let me show you. This is a big building up here, a big skyscraper. 
I know, great artist, you know? Okay? And here's God sitting up there on top of the skyscraper, and he can see the whole parade. Okay? He knows everything that's going to happen, that's already happened, that's happening right now, that ever could happen. Okay? So, if he's the only one with all the information, he's the only one that's going to be able to make a determination about what's going to happen in your life. He's the only one who has all the facts. You don't have all the facts, and certainly not the people who call you those names don't have all the facts. You can't... What? That's right. You cannot make an educated decision about anything if you don't have all the facts. How many of you guys ever sit down and take a test at school and you take a test on things that the teacher didn't even teach you? Miss West, I do. Okay, you're not supposed to raise your hand, sorry. That's a bad example. Usually, the teachers teach you something before they test you on it, okay? They want you to have all the facts before you make your determination, okay? Since we don't have any way of knowing all the facts about everything that's coming in our lives, we can only make the best decision based on the information that we have right now at this point in time, okay? The people who want to think that they can judge you have even less information, okay? Because although I love Allie to pieces, I do not live with her. I do not live inside of her. I don't know her soul, okay? So, I see the part of Allie that comes here every Tuesday and is fun-loving and laughs and has a great time. That's the Allie that I see. I don't see her who she really is when she's at home crying and upset. I don't see why people don't understand her. You know, I don't see inside of her. And she doesn't see inside of me. Okay? I have limited information. So, even when other people say things about you, they still don't have the information. You have the information on what you know now and what you know from the past, but you don't have your future. So neither one of you are qualified to decide what's going to happen in your life. God is the only one that has all the info. Okay? And if I would have known 20 years ago that I was going to be standing here in front of you today trying to teach you these things, certainly I would not have had that big A on my chest and become an adulteress. Okay? Because that makes me look bad. And I would never, ever, ever want to do anything to jeopardize what I have now. But I did dumb things back in my past. Okay? So you guys have to learn to make good decisions now based on the information that you have now. You know what's going on in your life now. You know what people say about you. You know not to listen. You know to keep coming to rise above because you're going to be learning things that are going to help you. Okay? You need to take the information that you have now, do the best you can with it, make the best, the best you that you can be. Okay? And you know what? As a matter of fact, I want you to take the best you that you can be, and I want you to take it one step higher. Okay? So if Allie's dream is to be on American Idol, yes. I want you to take that one step higher. Your dream is not to be on American Idol. Your dream is to win American Idol. Okay? Or your dream is to get a record contract. Or your dream is something better than that, whatever God has in store for you, whether it means singing or not. Okay? So I want you guys to stop and just think about it for a few minutes. What do you want out of your life? Because guess what? God plants every a dream inside of each, each and every one of us. My dream for the longest time was to be a singer. Okay? And I still get to use that in here. Sometimes I sing to you guys. Sometimes I get to sing at church. And that's all fun and dandy. But God knew that this was going to be way much more important. And that's why the things that happened to me happened to me. So that I have life experiences to draw on and be able to teach you guys. Okay? I know that I didn't go through everything that I went through for no reason. There was a reason for all of it. And it's because you guys are sitting here and learning from it. Hopefully. All right? Now... How many of you walk around with your own letter? Maybe not. Maybe it's not an A. Maybe it's a different letter. Maybe you have a bad letter that you think of yourself. Maybe you have something in your mind that continually comes in and you think, I'm a bad person because of that. And you label yourself. Okay? The only reason that people, I'll explain this again, the only reason people do not see this letter on me it's because I choose not to wear it. And the only reason 
that you're going to be able to get rid of that label that you put on yourself is if you choose not to wear it. You can keep calling yourself that all the time. And guess what? The more things that's in your mind that's bad and negative and that you keep telling yourself, that stuff comes to pass, people. You have to feed your mind with good things, okay? Good hopes, good dreams, what you want to be, not what everyone else thinks you are. Sometimes our parents are even the worst, the worst enemies. I mean, um, Amanda stood up here and, you know, talked about how our dad beat her and her stepdad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and things like that. And I've had so many kids come and tell me, you know, that their parents are the worst offenders. Their parents will tell them you're not worth anything. You know? And if that is you, I'm so sorry for you. People don't have any idea how much they hurt you when they say things like that, especially someone that's close to you as your parents. I was lucky. Even when I was growing up and I didn't have anything and I was the stinky, dirty kid and whatnot, I still had parents that loved me. Yes, ma'am. Can I do Yes. Um, my mom dropped out of college to have me, and she still work, like blames me to this day for it, for her like not getting where anywhere in life. So it's kind of like when she tells me that, it kind of makes me not want to get anywhere in life either, because I feel like I'm so like basically ruining everybody's lives. Okay, she's putting that <coughs> label on you. Right. You choose to wear it. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. You don't have to choose to believe that. Even though she says that to you, it doesn't make it true. You are the one that has the opportunity and the privilege to say, you know what? I'm going to shake that off. That is not me. That is not who I'm going to be. I don't have to listen to that, and I don't have to believe it. That isn't true. Brittany, I did it. People do it all the time. Yeah. That's right. That's absolutely right. And guess what? If we would stop and think about it, most of the things that people say about us are not true to begin with. I can pretty much 99% guarantee you that the little girls that stood up here that had the word whore, I can guarantee you that's probably not what they are. Okay? The things that people say about you are nine times out of ten not true anyway. So why are you going to let them put that on you? Sorry, I didn't just have me over back there. Go check. Yeah. Oh, let me give you one more little tidbit here on this. So we're talking about what other people think of us. I'll give you one thing that's really helped me that since I heard it, I try to live by it. What other people think of you is none of your business. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about trying to care what anybody thinks about you. Don't worry about, what so and so say about, oh my gosh, I heard they was talking about me. No, it ain't none of your business. You don't need to know because guess what? If you know what they were saying about you and it wasn't true anyway, what is it going to accomplish? It's going to make you mad. It's going to make you feel bad about yourself. Okay? You don't need that. Don't, don't even go there. All right, so why are we talking about this in a, in a bullying class? What does it have to do with bullying? Yes? Because if you think about that about yourself, then you're bullying yourself, basically. basically. Bullying yourself, right. That's exactly right. Why else? When people bully you, it takes away your self-confidence. They're trying to take it away from you. Right. Why are they trying to take it away from you? Because they want to bring you down to their level, they have no self confidence. That's right. Yes, Rosie. Um, when like you feel bad about yourself, you treat others bad. Like you do. That's right. When you have lack of self confidence, you usually treat others bad. Amanda. People like feel like they have the upper hand. Like they feel like they get power from them. Right. Right. We have learned that that over time, um, people that bully usually have. Miss Angie, no side conversations, please. <laughs> <laughs> see, you are getting it. You're getting your apple. Continue. People that have problems, people that have problems with their own self-confidence, do feel the need to bully other people to bring them down to their level. Okay, rather than lifting themselves up, they choose to tear you down. Now, it's just like what I told Amanda. You don't have to go there. You don't have to believe that. Okay, whatever they say about you doesn't make it true. I used to tell Lauren all the time, if somebody calls you a garbage man, does that make you one? No. 
Okay, then you're not obligated to believe everything that people say about you. And certainly not obligated to have it running around and around in your mind, poisoning your thoughts about yourself. You've got better things to think about, people. Seriously, positive thoughts, things that you want your life to be. Spend your time focusing on those things, not all the crap that people say about you. Also, self-confidence. Okay, here, let's go here. Many people, I saw this in a movie the other day, actually. It's a terrible movie, but it had one good line. And the one point is that Tintin movie. You guys oh, don't see it. It's terrible. Anyway, a man goes up and he grabs Tintin and he says, listen, so many people throughout your life are going to put you down and call you worthless and tell you you can't do it and tell you who you can't be and what you can't do. Don't you ever say that to yourself. Trust me. Enough people are going to say it for you. Don't you be guilty of saying it yourself. Okay? You don't need that. You don't need to wear that letter. Take it off. Now, another reason I'm bringing this up in a bullying class is self-confidence is a deterrent to bullying. Okay? Say, um, Kira, come here and help me. Kira is a um, self-confident self person, and she walks around with her head up high. And she don't care if anybody thinks of her. She's got herself all figured out. She's going to do what God wants her to do. She's going to be who she wants to be. And she walks around. And then I am the opposite. And I walk around like this. Because I'm all worried about what Kayla said about me yesterday. I'm worried she's going to come beat me up. Okay. Who is the bully going to pick on? The weaker me. Right. Thank you, Kira. So, so let me tell you. When you have the right amount of self-confidence, it's going to keep people from picking on you. Not all the time, because sometimes bullies enjoy a challenge. I will not say that, okay? I will not guarantee you this is bully-proof. But it will give you a lot better chance of the bully going on to the next person and leaving you alone, okay? Also, self-confidence will help you have enough strength to help somebody else who doesn't have the strength. Remember we talked, Chris. No side conversations. <laughs> When you become strong and you have the right amount of self-confidence, you are going to be that much more able to help someone else who doesn't have self-confidence, okay? So if Kira was a very self-confident person and she walked around and she knew where she was going in life and she saw me getting picked on, she's probably going to be a lot more likely to come help me and come to my aid and say, you know what, don't pick on her. You don't need to do that, you know? Because guess what, let me tell you, being 41 years old like I am, I am not afraid of too much anymore, people, okay? Trust me, if I see any of you guys getting bullied, I'd be like, Psh, come on, you're gonna deal with me now. I don't even think so, and I'm about this high, okay? So, you guys, need, you guys need to understand. It ain't because I know how to fight. It ain't because I, I got anybody who can back me up. It's because I'm confident and I know ain't nobody gonna mess with me unless they got a dang good reason, okay? It's because the way I carry myself. You guys see that? Okay? I talk loudly. I hold my head up high. I smile and I make eye contact with you. Those are the things that I want you guys to learn. Those are the things that are helpful. Don't laugh at me. I'm serious. I'm serious. Now, we, need, we do need to draw a fine line here. Okay? Whoa.
okay? We're all on level playing ground, okay? We're all human beings. We're all people capable of love, worthy of love, worthy of respect. Each person, I believe, has that, okay? And when you start to see the world like that, you can be sure that you are not going to be accused of being conceited, okay? Does that make sense? You guys get that? <laughs> because if you are conceited, trust me, you will be bullied. Okay? Conceited people get bullied. You are not better than anyone else. Remember that. Now, last thing. Life will always have challenges. Always. No matter how old you get. I still have things that I have to struggle with every single day. Okay? And I'm sure I will until the day I die. My dad's 20 years older than I am. He still has challenges. Okay? But if you have self-confidence, and you know the person who you are becoming, you know the person who you want to be and you're working towards that, and you're willing to be the person that God wants you to be and do what God has planned for you, okay? If you can do that, those challenges that you come across in life are going to help shape you, they're not gonna break you, okay? So many people, challenges come to them in one form or another and they use that to, to just get broken down and depressed. It's like Amanda was talking about. She had so many things that she was struggling with, she became broken down and depressed. Okay? I could have very easily done that when Lauren died. I could have very easily gone in my bedroom and said, forget this whole world, I am never getting out of bed again, I don't care, I can stay there and cry all the time. But I chose not to because I know that there is better for me than that. Okay? The Bible does say that. And I know I'm Sorry, with all the Bible talk, but one of the verses in the Bible that I really like talks about how God has great plans for you, better than what you have for yourself. You just keep that in the forefront of your mind. Learn to see what can be, not just what is. Okay? When Ben and I bought this house, it was a wreck. It was a wreck. Then when you come in the door, how many of you guys have been in my house? <coughs> and it's like, okay. When you come in the door and you see that cute little yellow room where the washer and dryer is and everything, it's all cute. Gorgeous. Okay. Let me, tell you, it is gorgeous. let me tell you, when we bought that house eight years ago, it had the most nastiest tile. It was so ugly. It was like from like 1951. And it had some nasty, ugly wallpaper all over the walls. It, it was yellow. It was. But when we came into that house, we saw potential. Yeah. We came in and said, man. <laughs> Listen, I'm making a point. When we came in, I saw that room and said, man, I could really do something cute with this room. I could put some little, I love that little white border there. I could paint that because it was ugly yellow. I could paint that white and I could do some clouds and I could do this, that, and the other. And we came in, that was the first thing I did. Tear up that ugly looking tile. Make something beautiful out of this. And we did that with room after room after room after room in that house until it became the way that we wanted it to be, okay? Because we saw potential. We could have been in, we could have come into that house and said, you know what, this house is just too ugly for us, and we could have just walked away, okay? Lots of people do that. That's why we ain't been able to sell our house in five years, because people come in and say, this house needs too much work. And they walk away. So many people can look at you and say, you know what? She ain't never going to do nothing. I'm just going to walk away. But you need to see potential in yourself and say, you know what? I am not always going to be the person that I am right now. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be who I want to be. I'm going to be who God wants me to be. Okay? So for next week's challenge, for here is up, this is going to be fun. What I want you to do, you work on this challenge together with a friend. Okay? You need a friend. If you don't have a friend, make one. Okay? Get together. Just two of you. Get yourself an index card if you can. If you don't have an index card, you can use a piece of paper, okay? But what I want you to do is each of you have an index card. And on one side of the index card, I want you to write down your dreams for yourself, okay? Write down who you want to be, all right? Then, when you get finished doing that, and you don't have to use one word. It can be more than one thing, okay? Write down everything that you want for yourself. When you get done with that, I want you to flip your card over. And I want you to write, actually, okay, yeah, what you want for yourself. Then I want you to trade, and then flip it over, okay? So trade, flip it over, and then I want you to write on your friend's card what you see in them, 
okay? Let me tell you why I'm doing this. My daughter, Brittany, she's graduated as an RN from school, okay? She didn't know she wanted to be a nurse until I saw that in her. And I said, you know what? You'd really make a good nurse. You're funny. You love to care about people. You know, you're really good in this, that, and the other. I think you'd make a great nurse. And the more she thought about it, the more she was like, you know what? I really think that might be something I'd like to do, you know? And she ended up going to college for it, and now she's an RN. Okay, so your friends sometimes will see things in you that you don't see for yourself. And that's why I want you to do this for each other. Write down what you see in each other, the, what you see your friend becoming 10 years down the road, okay? Then I want you to trade back so you have your own card, okay? And I want you to look at both sides of your card, and I want you to discuss it. Talk about, okay, why did you say, why'd you say that about me? What is it that you, you know, you, you think I'm funny and I can do this? Why, you know? And talk about it with them, okay? You guys think you can do that? Mm -hmm. Of course. It's going to be fun. It really is. And then when you're finished, you're going to have that card that you can, you can probably hold on to that card and put it away, and it'll be something that's precious to you. Because not only do you have your own dreams for yourself on that card, you're going to have your friend's dream for yourself on that card. And that's going to be something that you may look back to in the future. Okay. So thank you for being so quiet and listening. I would, just a couple more things, and then I'll let you guys eat, okay? Um, I wanted, did want to tell you that we were able to um, raise $161 from Lawrence Purple Stocking. And we added money to that from the funds that we already had, and we gave away $200 to a needy family. Thank you so much for giving to that. Um, the person that received the money got it anonymously. They do not know it was from Rise Above. Um, and they were very thrilled and blessed that someone would think of them and their family at Christmas time. So you made them very, very happy. Yes? What you do is just like put it on their door? No, I, I sent a delivery person. It was an anonymous thing. Yes. Do they know it's us now? No, I don't want them to know. Because that takes the fun out of yeah, it. Oh, no, that takes the fun out of it. See, when you do something nice for someone else and they have no clue who did it, you get that good feeling that you did something good. If you give that away by saying, yeah, I'm the one that did it, woo, I got that bow down to me. No, that takes it away, okay? We don't want to do that. Yes, ma'am. We realize we're being restored. I know, don't watch, don't watch. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for giving. Um, I really appreciate that. And then, uh, just to go over real quick, January 29th is gonna be our karaoke pizza party. What? Karaoke <laughs> pizza party. We are going to be pre-selling tickets um, to that event. I was going to start tonight, but I don't think I'm ready to tonight. So. Um, then we are also going to have just a couple more minutes, guys. February 27th, we're going to the blind school for our blind experience. Um, we'll be doing that together as a field trip, and I will need drivers for that. So keep that on your schedule. March 24th is the Hope for Hunter walk. Um, I know that some of you have seen on uh, Facebook that Rachel Sims is selling t-shirts for the walk um, just to support her. They're $10 and Waylon is going to be taking um, orders for those if you have your money tonight and you want to go ahead and order one. They're the same size as these are. I mean, so whatever size you take in a Rise Above shirt, you can take in one of those too. And we're going to do that to raise money for muscular dystrophy. Okay. Questions? Comments? I love you guys. Go have your pizza. <laughs>